when we first see cars as kids and we see these massive metal dinosaur sized monsters driving around all over the place. The next thing we notice is that there's people actually controlling them. At that point you decide you either want the fastest one or the one that'll go over everything. Coney Island, where I grew up, there were beaches there that would allow four by fours. We didn't have a four by four truck. My dream was to do what these people were doing. Just a kid in Brooklyn wanted a four by four so bad. I finally have it. My name is Pav Litwinski. I'm a car photographer and I drive a 1973 Land Rover Series 3. I really love this truck. If I named it after my older brother. They're both from 73, so the truck's name is Adash. It's an awesome truck that I've had for about five years now. I found it in Detroit. Apparently the first owner was a guy in South Dakota, a doctor that did house calls in the truck. From the moment I found it, we've been inseparable. As far as I know, the guy that I bought the truck off of um, didn't do anything to it other than respray it. Personally, I didn't know I was getting that. I always wanted a truck. I believe in it being rough. I rarely give it a bath. I rarely clean it or anything like that. I like it when it gets dirty. I've always wanted an old truck with a tire on the hood. That's it, man. That simple. There's something about the proportions, the simplicity of it. You could draw it in like three lines, man. Since I got the truck, I've used it pretty much almost every day. By getting a truck that has a lot of space under the bonnet, I was actually looking forward to having to be forced to learn and pick up a book, but it never breaks down. I really like taking the Land Rover to my photo shoots because the simplicity of the flat box that it is, it gives me a lot of options for whether or not I need to stand up on the bumper or like put a ladder up and back. I have a basically platform on four wheels. It's almost like a dolly to get different angles and vantage points on whatever my subject car happens to be. So it's become like a photo assistant. A couple of years ago, I ended up going through some time without too much freelance work and I had to sell like the STI, I had to sell a bunch of my gear. At one point I even sold the SLR that I was using the most. Throughout that time I'd look at the truck once in a while and I was like, you're not going. And it stayed. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> I expect it to move from point A to point B. I don't really care how long it takes, so it drives fantastic. Maximum speed is about 50. There's definitely a point where you don't want to go any faster in these trucks. I researched a ton to make sure I'm not that guy who does something really stupid. To go on too low, press that. And that's slow. When out in the dunes and Pismo, the sand could trick you. 
dune tops ahead of you and it looks like all level ground and then suddenly there'll be like a 30 foot drop. You do hear about people getting seriously hurt, mangled and like die out in the dunes as well. It's because they just fly off of these things, they get caught up. And when you're driving a truck that's without a roll cage, you have to be really careful. I'm out in Pismo Beach, as soon as I get away from all the camps and the shoreline, I forget about everybody else. I'm completely either in Africa somewhere or like just, just someplace else, man. Nobody else exists. It's like you really could get lost because overnight the wind wipes out most of the tracks on the sand and you really have that whole giant sandbox to yourself. And I can't stop smiling. I must look like an idiot driving this truck sometimes because I'm like, <laughs> I can't believe I have this thing, you know? All I want to do is go on adventures. And I'm really hoping to A, go up the coast as far as I can, and then B, go down the coast as far as I can. See how far I get. <laughs>